start with earth science. We have number one. Metamorphism over a vast area brought about by both heat and pressure is called what? So we have different types of metamorphism. Um, we have letter A, um, shear metamorphism, B, contact, C, regional, and D, none of the above. So the keyword here is uh, this vast area. So malaki yung lugar na nasasakupan nitong metamorphism na ito. So the answer should be letter C, regional metamorphism. So what do you mean by regional is that um, it happens in a vast area on which uh, there is a change of the pre-existing rock from uh, either um, igneous or sedimentary. So let's review the other uh, metamorphism. We have uh, this basic two. We have regional and we have the contact. So let's differentiate uh, regional versus contact metamorphism. Contact metamorphism um, occurs whenever there is an adjacent uh, igneous intrusion and other types of rocks on that uh, on that area, while regional metamorphism occurs uh, on a larger region of the crust. We have other types of metamorphism. We have also this what we call hydrothermal metamorphism. So this happens on the uh, divergent boundaries that is located in between uh, our oceans. The next one is we have um, uh, impact metamorphism. So from the word impact or from the word shock, it is it happens when a terrestrial, extraterrestrial body from outer space that, it, that happens to be uh, going to the Earth, then it, uh, it will land on our, uh, the Earth's surface. Therefore, there will be a change in heat and pressure because of that impact. Then the place or the location on it, um, on the impact, has, has, has it landed, um, there will be a change on the composition of the rocks. So therefore, it will, make, uh, it will, be, it will create metamorphic rocks afterwards. The last one is we have uh, burial metamorphism. So this happens when sedimentary rocks are being buried into, uh, into depths of several hundreds of meters. Then because of the uh, what you call this? Uh, because of the process of burying, there will be gradual uh, changes in temperature, increasing temperature and pressure. So therefore, there will be differential stress forming metamorphic rocks. Okay, so we have metamorphism on a vast area. We have regional metamorphism. Number two, the largest units of geologic time are what we call. Yeah, it's either eras, epoch, uh, we have eons or periods. So sa sa let, uh, medyo tricky po ito. If ever hindi nyo alam kung ano ang mga uh, geologic timeline na nakasabit ito. So the answer here should be the largest. It should be eons. This is the largest among the geologic time scale. So we have the four geologic time scale. We have eon, era, period, and epoch. So from eon, we have the Phanerozoic to Proterozoic, Archean, and Hadean. We have the four eras, starting with the Precambrian, Paleozoic, Mesozoic, and Cenozoic, and the different time periods that we'll, we, 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 we will tackle it later. So these different time periods coincides on uh, the creation of mammals, humans, um, the bacteria, so on and so forth. And the epoch are just the uh, smaller units among the recent uh, era we have the Cenozoic. So let's have number three. Earthquake vibrations are detected, measured, and recorded by instruments called what? Remember that this question talks about the instrument itself. So therefore, the whole, me uh, the whole mechanism, not the parts of the uh, instrument. Because this question is very tricky. It's very confusing if ever you don't know the parts of that instrument. So, so we sometimes uh, mamal, uh, ma mali yung ano, uh, thinking natin kung ano ba si sonograph, ano ba si seismograph, at ano din si, si seismometer. So the answer here should be letter C, 
seismogram. Okay. Let's now differentiate a uh, seismogram versus seismometer. Okay? So, seismogram here from the word gram, it means the record. Okay? Yan yung sinusulatan ng instrument. Seismometer on the other hand is yung part of the instrument that makes uh, parang yung pen na sinusulat niya. While as si seismogram is the whole entity, the whole instrument itself. So I have these images here so that we can visualize it. So seismogram, seismograph is the whole instrument. Seismometer is that uh, the part of the instrument that makes the uh, the image, and the seismogram is the whole image itself or the whole record. Okay, let's go to number four. The agents that cause erosion are called what? So we have. Uh, A, glaciers and waves, waves only, streams and waves, or streams, glaciers, and waves. So, mapapansin natin dito sa number four is that all of them covers up uh, movement. Diba? So, whenever there is movement, there should be an uh, erosion happening on that area. So, we have streams. Meron tayong tubig. So, therefore, there should be erosion. Glaciers also, there's, there is a movement there from the ice itself and also waves. So therefore, the answer should be letter D. Streams, glaciers, and waves. Let's go to number five. Quasars are what? Okay. If you don't know, uh, you don't have the knowledge about these quasars, let's go to the, uh, the choices so that we can, we can select it. Um, letter A, we have very large objects. B, were first detected by radio telescopes. C, are very small objects. And D, it exhibits blue shifts in their spectrum. So from the word quasars, um, we can um, have an analogy of it uh, with, with our own universe. So therefore, it should be large, diba. Right? So cancel na yung si letter C. Wala na to. Are very small objects. Because when we talk about um, uh, heavenly bodies, it they, they should be large. So we we are left with A, B, and C. So A are very large object. It is very vague. So let's cancel this. So we are left with letter B and D. So remember, um, we have um letter D exhibit blue shifts in their spectrum. So. When we talk about quasars, we are talking about heavenly bodies that is far away from our uh, own planet. So meaning to say, if you have the idea that the universe is expanding, meaning to say that it exhibits the red shift in their spectrum. So cancel din C, letter D. So we are left with the answer that is letter B. They were first detected by radio telescopes. So again, quasars are first detected by radio telescope. So quasars is uh, just an acronym meaning to say that it is in the long term, we have the quasi-stellar radio source. So it is a supermassive black hole. It is a black hole that is feeding on the gas at the center of a certain or a particular distant galaxy. So let's go to number six. Not a common metamorphic rock is what? Again, not a common. So hindi siya isang metamorphic rock. So which among the choices is not a metamorphic rock? So the answer is letter A, granite or granite. So let's review uh, the three basic types of rock. So we have igneous sedimentary and metamorphic and all of these three basic types of rocks has have different uh, source material in igneous we have it is made from uh, melted rocks from the uh, from magma sedimentary it occurs whenever that there is a, a igneous or metamorphic or a sedimentary that has been weathered and being eroded so that is the source material metamorphic on the other hand is due to rocks that undergoes high temperature and pressure under the crust. 
or in the upper mantle. So the primary processes on these three basic rock, basic types of rocks, in igneous we have crystallization. Okay, meaning to say the magma or the lava has been solidified to form these uh, igneous rocks. In sedimentary rocks, we have these processes, deposition, burial, and lithification. The main process of sedimentary is lithification, meaning to say that these tiny bits of rocks have been formed and been compacted and being lithified, meaning cemented to form, uh, uh, to form sedimentary rocks. Metamorphic. Metamorphic is uh, due to recrystallization, meaning to say there is a gradual change of the components inside that rock structure or in that uh, in that comp in its composition. So it is making new minerals due to temperature and high pressure. So these are the examples. We have granite, igneous, sandstone sedimentary, and nice, we have metamorphic. So let's talk about um, igneous rocks. Kasi madami itong gagawas, uh, madami itong lalabas sa let mo. So we have uh, igneous rocks. There are two types of igneous rocks. It's either um, intrusive or extrusive. Intrusive meaning inside. Extrusive meaning outside. Okay, either volcanic meaning in it has formed in a volcanic setting, intrusive inside inside the earth meaning plutonic. It is uh, way below the surface of the earth. So, in uh, an igneous rock, it has different colors. It may be felsic or it may be mafic. Felsic meaning it is a uh, light colored, mafic meaning dark colored. If we say that it is felsic meaning that it, it has an acidic component. Composed of what? Composed of primarily silica. So higher silica content, si felsic, dahil light colored siya. Mafic on the other hand is darker colored because it is uh, more basic and it has lesser percentage of silica. That's why it is dark. Okay? So on the other hand, we have igneous rocks according to its uh, grain composition, meaning to say its texture. Extrusive, when we differentiate extrusive and intrusive, extrusive, it means that it has a texture that is mostly fine grain or maybe glassy. Okay, Extrusive, fine grain. Intrusive, meaning coarse grain. Malalaki yung uh, mineral crystals niya compared to extrusive. Okay? So let's go to uh, the sedimentary sedimentary rocks. So we have three types of sedimentary rocks. We have clastic, formed by pre-existing rocks or tiny bits of rocks. We have crystalline and bioclastic. Both of these um, sedimentary rocks are formed by in a chemical basis or organically. So, in clastic sedimentary rocks, these are the inorganic ones that is derived from land. They have different grain sizes. We have uh, pebbles, cobbles, boulders, sand, silt, and clay. And each of which has its different structure on this, uh, what you call this, on this slide. Okay? So, let's go to metamorphic. So, metamorphic, on the other hand, has also uh, two different types of textures. We have foliated and non-foliated. So if we differentiate foliated and non-foliated, foliated meaning it has band structures. It has layers on its uh, rock structure. Niya. So it has mineral alignments. It has bandings. So makikita natin, meron siya mga linya doon. That is what we call foliated metamorphic rocks. Non-foliated, on the other hand, we cannot find uh, the bandings. We cannot find the layers. So, uh, meaning to say that this, uh, these metamorphic rocks are formed by heat and pressure. These foliated metamorphic rocks are the ones that have been formed by sedimentary rocks, which were layered and buried deep inside the earth's crust. While the non-foliated ones are formed by uh, the igneous intrusions. It may be on a regional basis or regional metamorphism or in the contact metaphorism side. Okay? So, that's all for the 
uh, basic types of rocks. Let's go to number seven. The approximate time between new and full moons is how many weeks? So, makikita natin sa calendar, if you know it, it should be um, the time span between new and full moon is two weeks. Okay? So, let's review the phases of the moon. We have first, we have full moon, waning gibbous, last quarter, waning crescent, new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter half moon, and the waxing gibbous moon. Let's differentiate waxing versus waning. Waning meaning um, nagkawala yung uh, light side ni moon. Okay? So papunta siya sa new moon. Mawawala si moon. Waxing meaning parang uh, nag-floor wax ka. May nandagdag sa sariling surface niya na makikita natin dito sa earth. Okay? So waning and, uh, uh, the light of the the reflected light from the moon, nagkawala siya, forming into a new moon. Then, after new moon, bumabalik na naman siya. That is what we call waxing. Let's go to number eight. The largest impact features on the moon are the what? So, we have Maria, rays, craters, and planes. So, the word, the key word here, the key term is impact features. So impact features when we say impact meaning to say that there is something that is happen that is that had happened on that surface. So impact we have ano mangyayari pag may something na extraterrestrial body nga pupunta sa isang uh, land surface. So ano ang maki-create niya? That is what we called craters. Okay? Craters are the impact features on the moon because of the uh, extraterrestrial bodies that have been gone because of the thin atmosphere of our moon. So let's have number nine. The two daily high tides are due mainly to what? Okay, again, two daily high tides. We are talking about the high tides. So let's try to uh, cancel the options. Okay, let's have letter D. Moon's gravitational force lifting the ocean water. So it is impossible that because of the moon, nililift niya yung ocean water. So cancel na yung C, letter D. Letter C. Gravi gravitational forces between the sun and the earth. So walang, uh, walang kinalaman pala si moon, which is uh, not. Okay? Which is not a reason. Because between the sun and moon, the sun has only a little gravitational attraction of the earth mismo. Okay? So, cancel C, letter C. Let's go to letter B. Gravitational forces between the sun and moon. So, hindi kasali sa earth. Okay? So, we are left with the answer. We have letter A. The differential gravitational attraction of the moon because of the inverse square relationship. Okay? It is between the Sun and the moon, and the moon is the primary uh, factor on which we, we have these uh, two daily high tides. Okay, number 10. Which was the Apollo mission with the first international space rendezvous? This was the first coordinated launch of two spacecraft from different countries. So, we have the key term here, the Lawang spacecraft now from different countries. So, Immediately, we can cancel Apollo 21 okay, and Apollo 19 because they are one specific uh, um, spacecraft. So we are left with letter B and letter D. So just think of it, just memorize this. If the question is uh, about two spacecrafts from different countries na isang, uh, one of the first international space rendezvous on which nagkita sila sa space at doon uh, yung dalawang crew is nag, uh, nagkita sila ang dalawa doon. So the answer here is the Apollo Soyuz uh, mission. Okay? That is letter D. So it uh, so dalawang spacecraft from I think the US and the and the, it, its Russian counterpart which is the Soyuz. So let's go to number 11. 
major concern about global warming arises from increased concentrations of what? So the key term here is global warming. And global warming is always associated with what component? We have the greenhouse gases, letter A. Okay? Global warming, again, is associated with greenhouse gases. Number 12. Which of the following is not, not a general physical feature of the moon's surface? Again, it is not a general physical feature of the moon's surface. So we have regolith, planes, terminators, and rays. So on the moon, regolith occurs as, uh, let's have letter A, regolith. It is a broken or powdery dust from a broken rock. So, meron siya doon kasi purely uh, land structure yung nasa moon. Planes are just regular planes. Siyempre, if we can find planes here in our land structure in Earth, siyempre makikita din natin yung nasa moon. Rays, on the other hand, is what we call the remnants of an impact crater from the moon. So, makikita natin yung rays na parang rays of the sun because of that impact. So, the answer here is Letter C, Terminator. Number 13. When rocks and geologic events are put into chronological order without regard to the actual dates. Okay? What do we obtain? So the key term here is without regard to the actual dates. Without regard. So we have two types of dating method. We have the absolute dating method. And we have the relative geologic method, uh, relative dating method. So when we talk about uh, um, absolute dating method, from the word absolute, meaning it is the actual dating, the exact date or the exact history of that certain uh, structure or certain type of rock. Relative geologic method, uh, ge rel relative dating method talks about how do we uh, relate the structure to another structure based from time. Okay? So, the answer here should be letter C. Relative geologic time. Okay? Again, relative dating method determines the age of a certain rock or a certain structure with respect to its uh, comparative sense. So, we are comparing the real object or the uh, something a rock here compared to this one. So for example, let's have um, relatively compared the age of your brother and from yourself. It's either is mas, uh, mas older siya or mas younger siya. Yan yung relative dating method. Absolute dating method is what? Kung yung kuya mo is 24 years old, that is the absolute date of your kuya. Okay? That is the absolute dating method. So, we um with respect to absolute dating method, we have these uh methods here. We have the carbon dating, which can be used only to certain materials that is approximately seventy years, seventy thousand years below. Okay, hindi na niya date yung above niyan. Okay, so next is we have the potassium argon dating. So it can date rocks that is 60,000 years old and older. While uranium dating, it is a very complex system of using multiple isotopes because of radioactive decay and it can uh, date way millions of years before. Kasi si uranium dating, matagal yan na magde-decay. Okay? That, this is for the absolute dating method. Let's go to relative dating method on how we relatively date these types of structures. We have the principles and laws of relative dating. So we have the law of superposition. So meaning to say that if there are layers of rocks or sedimentary rocks, the older ones are found below, the, in beneath it. The younger ones are found above. Cross-cutting law. There are features uh, below the Earth's surface like, for example, we have uh, igneous intrusions. We have faults also. If these structures, if these features cuts across a layer, meaning to say that the one that it 
the one that cuts the structure that is the youngest okay like for example here there there is a uh igneous intrusion here that is uh go uh, going inside or going outside these sedimentary structures here so the youngest portion or the youngest layer should be this uh feature here okay law of inclusion these are the rocks that are embedded in other rocks so meaning to say the one that is embedded on those rocks are much older than those rocks they are embedded in so mas older yung rocks mismo na naka-embed doon sa rocks na nanjan uh, surrounding that type of rock that is law of inclusion next we have the law of one succession so it depends on which layer we can find these fossils. And when we say fossils, we can absolute date them. Then if we compare these absolute dates, we can determine on which layer of that uh, nakita natin yung uh, fossil doon, on which layer kung sino ang much older or kung sino ang much younger. Next, law of original horizon horizontality. So if we can see that there is, if we compare that there is a hill here, that is still horizontal. But on the other side, there is a bandings na, na, na curve na yung uh, layers niya. Meaning to say that the one hill that is still horizontal, that is much younger compared to the ones na under pressure na siya. So much older yung under pressure compared to this horizontal structure. Okay, that is law of original horizontality. Next, we have law of lateral continuity. So meaning to say, if we can find a river channel that is due to the river that is eroding the place. Meaning to say that both of the layers, both banks are the same structures and have the same components. Next, the last one, we have fault. Same with the uh, cross-cutting law. The one that is being, uh, if we can see a fault line there, meaning to say that this fault line is much younger than the rock that it cuts through. Always younger C fault line. Okay? So, those are the things that we need to determine or that we need to assess to know the relative age of a certain structure based from the other structure. Okay? Let's go to number 14. Only about 50% of the solar energy directed towards the Earth penetrates directly to the surface. What happens to the rest of the radiation? So based from here, if there is a radiation, a radiation from the sun, hindi yan lahat papasok sa Earth. Kasi 50% lang yung dederecho towards the Earth's surface. What will happen Doon sa 50%. So we can say that this 50% alongside the ones na papasok sa earth, it is being what? Absorbed or reflected by the atmosphere. Because yung atmosphere natin is mayroon siyang kakayahan na i-reflect niya yung uh, sun rays. Kumbaga. Kasi meron tayong mga clouds, meron tayong meron din tayong tinatawag na albedo. So, half of the percentage will go or will be reflected by the atmosphere, by our clouds, and some of which will be uh, absorbed by the atmosphere itself. Okay? So, letter B. Absorbed or reflected by the atmosphere. Number 15. In a desert, the prime mover of the land material is what? So the key term here is prime mover. So sino ang nagpamove sa mga materials doon sa desert? It's either gravity, trip, wind, or rain. So in a desert, meaning to say it is a dry land, meaning walang tubig. Okay? Gravity is always present, but it doesn't mean that Always gravity yung nakapamove dun sa mga uh, rocks doon or dust doon. Hindi. So we can associate 
automatically desert of letter C, win. Again, desert, win. Gravity on the other hand, makikita natin yun sa mga rock falls. Okay? Doon sa mass wasting. Because of gravity, nag-move yung mga rocks. Creep on the other hand can be found saan? Sa glaciers natin. Or in a certain type of land structure na slowly nag-move siya because there is something or a watery uh, or a water body that is found below that one. Mostly, they can be found in uh, a glacier setting. Rain, syempre, pag may tubig, always nag-move yung land material. Let's go to 16. What does the fundamental mechanism of mountain building appear to be? Ito, medyo confusing ito. Kasi, um, if you have the knowledge, if you know orogenesis, that should be the answer here. Okay? But we have diastrophism, thrust faulting, volcanism, and sedimentation. Again, the key term here is mountain building. Mountain building meaning pag create or pag build ng mga mountains natin. Okay? It should be letter A, diastrophism. That is the main term okay, of the processes. In specific, we will just specify it. We have the endogenic processes. It's either two movements, the slow movement and the sudden movement. The astrophism talks about the slow movement, which is the either vertical or horizontal. Horizontal and vertical are what we call the mountain building processes. If we specify it much further. Okay? So, orogeny. These are the main process. The slow movement is what you call the diastrophism. The sudden movements, on the other hand, we are talking about volcanism and earthquakes. Okay? Sudden, kasi hindi natin alam kung kailan uh, mangyayari po ito. So let's go to 17. The surfaces of planet Mercury and our moon contain some very larger craters that are most likely the result of what? Okay? Again, very large craters. So, sino ang uh, cause niyan? Siyempre, that is letter B, asteroid impacts. Again, craters, asteroid impacts. Number 18. During periods of increased global temperatures, which of the following is most likely to occur? The key term here is increased global temperatures. So when we say global temperature, we are talking about what type of compound? That is carbon dioxide. Ano siya? Increasing ba siya or decreasing? Kasi increased global temperatures. Nag-iinit yung uh, system natin dito sa ating planet. So it should be letter B, increasing. Number 19. Ito, simple lang to. Oceans cover about what percent of Earth's surface? It should always be 75%. Okay? The oceans are 75%. Number 20. To describe mineral hardness, we use what type of method? Okay? What type of method? Letter A, uranium. B, MOS scale. C, potassium. D, carbon dating. Okay? Mineral hardness, it should be always the MOS hardness scale. Ito, you should memorize this one. Kasi may lalabas dito sa exam kung ano ang uh, MOS hardness scale ng mga... Wait lang. Okay, let's continue. So again, uh, to describe mineral hard hardness, we are we will use the MOS hardness scale. So we have talc, gypsum, calcite, fluorite, apatite, orthoclase, quartz, topaz, corundum, and the hard the hard the hardest is diamond. Okay, let's go to number 
2021. A major source of air pollution is what? Again, major source of air pollution. Nuclear energy, acid rain, incomplete combustion, or temperature inversions. So, air pollution always i-associate natin sa incomplete combustion. Letter C. So, let's try to differentiate complete combustion and incomplete combustion. So, they differ in the product na lalabas sa reaction. In incomplete combustion, meron siyang carbon monoxide. Okay? Sa incomplete combustion, we have this carbon monoxide. And because of this, we have this air pollution. Okay? Unlike the complete combustion, uh, we have carbon dioxide and water only. Okay? Number 22. Um, fossils from Precambrian time could include what? What type of organ organisms na makikita natin doon sa uh, Precambrian period? What mostly? Ba primitive age yun? So, wala pang mga um, land-dwelling uh, animals or any other type of organisms. So, we have letter D. Algae, bacteria, and sea worms. Those were the first ones that have been roaming around the earth on this Precambrian time. So, let's talk about the different time periods. Okay? So, we have the, Cam the Precambrian. Again, we have the algaes and the uh, multicellular organisms. Cambrian period, the evolution. Ordovicians, we have the corals. Silurian, we have the uh, fishes. Devonian, we have the ferns, uh, the seed-bearing plants. Mississippian, we have the insects. Pennsylvanian, we have the reptiles. Permian, we have uh, the, the last part of the Paleozoic era on which there is a, a major extinction period. Okay? Let's go to Mesozoic area. This is the era on which nandito yung dinosaurs. Okay? And on this Cretaceous period, this is the extinction time. Okay? Dito yung nawala yung mostly lahat ng mga dinosaurs. Cenozoic area, era is the rise of the mammals. Okay? So these are the different life forms that you should know. Sa lalabas ng let, ito yung usual. Itong Precambrian, lalabas itong Cretaceous, at si Cenozoic yung mammals. Okay? Just memorize that one. Let's go to 23. In about 12,000 years, the star Vega will be the North Star and not Polaris. Because of Earth's what? So, at the present, our North Star is Polaris. But, 12,000 years later, it will change. For what reason? Okay? The reason of which is letter A. The precession of the Earth. Or what we call the wobble. Because it is not always, um, it is not always na yung axis natin sa Earth or pag-revolve natin sa Earth, always siya nakaganyan. Mag-move din siya parang ganito. So, the next time that our North Star will be Vega. Okay? Not the, the present time Polaris. So, that is because of the Earth's precession. Okay? 24,000 years wobbling. 24. A hardened tree resin in which ancient insects have sometimes been preserved as what? Okay? Hardened tree resin. So always we have letter B, amber. Okay? Tree resin, we have amber. 25. Which statement about the north magnetic pole of the earth is true? Again, which statement about the north magnetic pole of the earth is true? So we are talking about the north magnetic pole because if we we have two types of poles the geographic uh, the true geographic pole and we have the magnetic pole different yun silang dalawa okay so which of this is true north magnetic pole 
its location never changes. We are talking about the magnetic pole. Magnetic meaning um, nabibase siya doon sa magnetic field ni Earth, which is constantly changing. So, hindi kasali, hindi true si letter A. Letter B, it corresponds to the north pole of a bar magnet. So, if we say that it is north, kokorespond ba siya within the north side of the pole of that bar magnet? North and north. Hindi, di ba? So, cancel sa letter B. So, we are left with letter C. It corresponds to the south pole of a bar magnet. Okay? So, letter D, it is both magnetic north and the geographic north is not the same. Because we are talking about the geographic north pole, mainly speaking, it is the center center most part of the north uh, northern side of the planet magnetic pole is the uh, mostly uh, on its surrounding area it is ever changing let's go to number 26 the planet which has no moon is what planet which has no moon so venus mars jupiter and earth jupiter always um obvious Madami. Jupiter has 53 named moons as of today, which uh, four of them is the, uh, the famous ones. We have the Galilean moons. We have Io, Ganymede, Callisto, and Europa. Ganymede is the largest moon on our solar system. Earth, all, obviously, we have one moon. Mars also have moons. We have the Phobos and Deimos. Venus is the one that has no moon. Okay? We have Venus. Number 27. Earth's atmosphere is divided into layers that are based upon their what? Yung atmosphere natin, and nakadivide siya into layers because of uh, its certain property. And that is letter C, temperature gradient. Because if we travel through our atmosphere, the temperature on each of these layers will change. Okay? Mag-change siya. From uh, troposphere, lalamig, going upside, uh, upward. But, pag nasa stratosphere ka na, slowly umiinit siya. Okay? Stratosphere, slowly umiinit siya. If you go to the mesosphere, it will go back to the, uh, it will be colder again. Then thermosphere, it will change. So, nakadivide siya into layers because of its temperature gradient. So, let's go to number 28. Fuel sources other than fossil and nuclear reactors are what? So, we are talking about fuel sources. So, if dinadali mo to, uh, probably yung isasagot mo dito is a uh, renewable source. Kasi may other than fossils. So, renewable source. Pero hindi renewable source ang sagot dito. Because we are talking about fuel sources. And fuel sources are not renewable. Okay? Fuel sources are not renewable. So, the answer should be letter A, alternative energy sources, letter A. Okay? So, again, fuel sources kasi, aside from fossil and nuclear reactors, that is alternative, not renewable, because we are talking about fuel sources. Number 29. Rocks formed by alteration of pre-existing rocks by pressure, temperature, or chemistry. Okay, na-discuss natin yung kanina. The answer should be metamorphic. Letter A. Okay, pre-existing rocks under temperature and pressure, always metamorphic. <clears throat> 30. The continuous circulation of Earth's water supply is known as water supply, water hydrology. Letter D. Hydrologic. Number 31. 
what is the downslope movement of overburden under the influence of gravity called? Okay? Na-discuss din natin yun kanina. So, movement, downslope of a land structure, okay, because of gravity, that is called mass wasting. Solifluction, mudflow, and slump are examples of mass wasting. Okay? So, yung sagot dito is mass wasting. So, we have types of mass movement. We have solifluction, earth flow, mud flow are under wet conditions. Soil creep, rock fall, debris slide are under dry conditions. And slump and debris flow have equal. Okay? If we base it on speed, mass slower si solifluction, slump, and soil creep. Slower yung movement niya compared ni mud flow, debris flow, and rock fall. Kasi automatic may nag-move. So, in layman's terms, always ginagamit ito sa mga news outlets, always landslide. Pero, may, may specifications, specifications siya. So, it's either uh, of this following uh, mass wasting movements. Okay? Let's go to number 32. Reasonable values for uh, the absolute dates for sedimentary rocks are determined by what? Again, we are talking about absolute dates for sedimentary rocks. Question, can we absolute date sedimentary rocks? Ba? Absolute dating kasi. But the, uh, the reality is sedimentary rocks cannot be absolute date. But we can use relative dating procedure to know the uh, date of that sedimentary layer. So the answer that here is letter A. We can relate them to igneous rocks. By what law? As mentioned kanina. By law of inclusion. Kasi included yung igneous rock or metamorphic rock doon sa sedimentary layers. And we can absolute date that igneous rock. And if that age of the igneous, igneous rock is say for 10,000 years old, the layer there nga na, nandun nakatapak yung igneous rock is also 10,000 years old. That is how we do relative dating methods. So letter A. Number 33. An observer is standing on the eastern side of a cliff where a sailing ship can be seen. So if yung ship is lalayo, makikita natin na slowly nagsisink siya. What could be the reason? Okay? Siyempre, all we know is that the earth is considered as a oblate spheroid. Yan yung shape mismo ni planet Earth. Letter D. Number 34. Earth's magnetic field is most likely due to what? Yung magnetic field ni Earth, meron, uh, may cause dyan. Okay? And the cause dyan is because of the letter A. Convection currents na nasa interior part sa ating planet. Okay? It is not rotation. It is not revolution. It, it's not because of small magnets. Okay? Rotation, ano? Day and night. Revolution, seasons. Okay? Millions of magnets, um, destructor lang yan siya. So the answer should be letter A. Number 35. Which of the following is not a common feature of sedimentary rocks? So there are many types of features of sedimentary rocks. Dahil iba-iba um, kasi yung ano, uh, pag-create niya. Madami kasing processes na uh, comprising on how to make these sedimentary rocks. So, which of the following? Okay? So, let's discuss about uh, the types uh, or the features of a sedimentary rock structure. We have stratification, meaning layers, cross bedding, nagko-cross yung mga layers niya, graded bedding, my gradual changes going below, ripple marks, mud cracks, fossils, and bioturbation. So, all of these features are or coming from the sedimentary process. So, the answer here is letter A. Discordant. 
discordant sa igneous rocks yan siya okay number 36 if the astronomical light source is moving away from us we observe that one so yung light source makikita natin yung star okay yung light source is always moving away from us what could be the reason the reason is letter ano di ba red shift red shift a heavenly body is moving away with respect to earth okay that is red shift and when we talk about red shift we are talking about longer wavelengths okay longer wavelengths number 37 the soil called loam is what si loam so makikita natin si loam is yan yung uh, type of soil na karaniwang ginagamit for uh, uh, plant o yung medyo humus type siya maraming uh, carbon carbon uh, component okay si loam kasi nasa uh, middle portion siya ng sand, silt, and clay. So, therefore, it has letter C equal amount of sand, silt, and clay. So, eto siya. Eto si Lo. Number 38. The statement which is true is that the moon is what? Si moon is what? Nagre-revolve ba siya na 31 days? Hindi. Kasi, Every 27 days siya, nagre-revolve around our Earth. Letter B. <clears throat> it is the second brightest object in the sky. Totoo ba? Yes, it is the second brightest object in the sky. What is the first brightest? Siyempre, yung sun natin. Okay? C. Does it has a magnetic field? No. Surface gravity. 1 over 81 ba? Hindi. Dahil 1.6 yung surface gravity niya compared to our Earth. Okay? The answer here is number uh, letter B, second brightest object. Let's go to 39. Early telescopes show stars as the only points of light while the planets appear to be much larger. So makikita natin sa sky natin is much mal mas malaki yung uh, uh, planets compared sa stars. What could be the reason? Siyempre, if we say that makikita natin yung stars at makikita natin yung planets, sino mas malayo? So C, stars yung malayo. So therefore, the answer is letter A. Be much farther from Earth than the other planets. Okay? 39, mas malayo si stars, kaya letter A. Much farther. 40, ito. Lalabas ito. Memorize, just memorize this one. Outer boundary of the solar system is thought to be as much as what AU from the sun. Yung distance niya from the sun. So outer boundary, labas na siya sa solar system, meaning to say it has 100,000 astronomical units from the sun. Okay? Again, pag ganito lalabas sa exam, automatic 100,000. Wala na. Wala na iba. Okay? Number 41. Geothermal energy, a possible energy source, is based on which phenomenon? Geothermal. From the word geo meaning earth. Earth, land. So, ano energy yan? Siyempre, letter C. Earth's internal energy. Ang heat sa internal energy ni earth is more than the sun. Okay? That is that phenomenon. Usually, ginagamit itong geothermal energy for extracting yung heat doon sa uh, nearest part of the Earth na merong uh, magmatic activity. Kagaya ng mga geothermal uh, plants natin dito sa Cotabato, I think. Meron din sa Luzon ata. Okay? Number 42. A subsidence temperature inversion is caused by what? Again, We have the term here subsidence meaning nag-subside. Okay? Temperature inversion meaning nag-change yung temperature ng ating air mass. Okay? So when we say about subsidence, again, nag-subside, yung air mass is going down, what will happen to the pressure? 
pag mo go down si Irmas. Siyempre, pressure will rise up. Pressure will increase. So therefore, the answer should be letter D. A high pressure air mass. Okay? So these are the types of temperature inversion. We have the normal, which is the cooler air is above, the warmer air is below. Pag may nangyaring temperature inversion, baliktad. Si warm air nasa taas, si cool air nasa baba. Okay? That is temperature inversion. Let's go to number 43. Tidal bulges in the ocean are due to what? Okay? Tidal bulges. So, we can automatically visualize our moon na ina-attract niya yung ocean parts natin kaya nagbubulge ang ating uh, ocean waters. So, the answer should be ano? letter A ba? Or letter C? The answer should be letter A. Mainly to the gravitational forces between the sun and moon. Okay? Number 44. The appearance of high cirrus clouds followed by thicker and lower stratus, stratus clouds then continuous light rain. Anong, anong air mass ba ito? Okay? The key term here is high cirrus clouds. Pag may makita na, may, pag may makikita natin yung high cirrus clouds within a certain location, that is always associated with maritime tropical. Okay? From the word maritime, maritime, pag, uh, when we say maritime, we are talking about moist. Moist air. Okay? Moist air. Tropical meaning warm. Moist and warm. Because of moist, and it has a warm temperature, it will create high cirrus clouds. So that is why the answer is maritime tropical. Number 45. A feature of coastal deposition. Okay? Coastal. So, bali, uh, nasa, ma, nasa coastline. Deposition, may nangyayaring addition. Hindi subtraction. Walang nag erode So, may nangyayaring, uh, for example, uh, may nabuo. Okay? May nabuo. Which of the following is a process that is formed by combination? Okay? combination. Sea arch. Okay? Meaning to say nag-arc. So, nag-erode. Hindi. Hindi letter A. How about speed, sea stack, and wave cut cliff? Cliff. Meaning to say, nag-erode pa rin. Kasi nasa sa cliff siya. Hindi siya pwedeng may mag a sa kanya. Sea stack or speed? Okay? Which of, the, which of these two? The answer is letter B. Speed. Okay? B is a deposition, coastal deposition. So if we visualize it, we have this type of erosional and depositional landscapes. Erosional, we have sea cliffs, caves, arches, sea stacks. Okay? The sea stack is like this one. Okay? This is a rock stack. Meaning, nakastack lang siya. But eventually, mawawala din yan due to erosion. Deposition landscape, we have uh, bay head, bars, sandbars. Yung, for example, yung sa Kamigin. Okay? White Island. Sandbar yun. Spits and Tombolo. Okay? Those are depositional landscapes. So remember that one. 46. The streak of a mineral can be obtained most easily by performing what test? Okay? Streak. When we say streak, Yan yung kulay, uh, yan yung real na kulay niya. How do we determine this one? By letter D. Rubbing the mineral on an unglazed white tile. So pag nirub natin yan, lalabas yung tunay na kulay. So, uh, usually ginagamit ito to, <clears throat> to determine a real gold from a false gold. Because a false gold, is always, yung straight color niya is color black. Yung gold na gold talaga is gold. Okay? Yan yung kaibahan niya. Yan yung ginagawang test natin. So, number 47. The age of the earth as determined by radiometric dating is, ano age ni earth? Of course, 4.56 billion years. Number 47. 
Okay, let's go to 48. The era on which uh, when dinosaur was common. Again, era. Era ha? Eon, era, period, epoch. Ay, tama ba? Oh. Eon, era, period, epoch. We are talking about era. Era sa mga dinosaurs. Ano yan? That is Mesozoic. Okay? Mesozoic. Cenozoic? Mammals. Cambrian? Yung mga multicellular organisms. Okay? Number 49. Process that is not a mechanical disintegration. Okay? Not, that is not a mechanical disintegration. So which of the following here is, be, is a process that talks about a change in its chemical composition? Okay? That is oxidation. Okay? Oxidation. Rusting is oxidation. So, nag-change yung chemical composition niya. Why as frost wedging, abrasion, and root penetration are mechanical disintegrations. Okay? Or mechanical weathering. Number 50. Half na tayo. 50 more. Chemical weathering can be determined by analyzing the rock swat. Okay? Chemical component, if we analyze it, anong ina-analyze natin? Yung ina-analyze natin is yung composition niya. Okay? Yung composition niya. Hindi density, hindi mass, at hindi temperature. Dahil physical factors yun. Okay? Again, chemical weathering, if we analyze it, through its composition. Number 51. Which of the following is not a name labeling part of the Earth's interior structure? So you should know this one. Okay? What are the parts of the interior structure of the Earth? Siyempre, from the surface, we have what? We have the crust, mantle, and core. But ano ang in-between nila? Okay? Ano ang in-between? So, may, meron tayo. So, ang sagot dito is letter D. Because, si Mohorovisic discontinuity is the in-between portion of the crust and the mantle. Siya yung, yung in-between niya. Si Gutenberg, on the other hand, is in-between the mantle and the outer core. Meron pa. Ano in-between ni outer core and inner core? That is lemon. Lemon discontinuity. Okay, wala yun dito. So at least, uh, baka lalabas, lemon discontinuity, outer core versus inner core. Okay, number 52. Cumulus clouds usually mean an on an asphalt atmospheric state of what? Cumulus cloud. If we say cumulus cloud, they are rain clouds. Okay? What state we can see if there is cumulus clouds on uh, on uh, on the sky? Ipakikita natin yung si cumulus clouds. There is rain. And when there is rain, there is instability. Hindi stable yung atmospheric state. Kaya umuulan. Okay? Cumulus, cumulus cloud, instability. Number 53. Air moving from the poles towards the equator turns west. Ano ang cause nito? Pag deflect ng wind. Okay? We will always associate this with, with one single term. That is the Coriolis effect. And when we talk about Coriolis effect, we are talking about the rotation of the planet. Dahil si rotation ng planet, siya yung nagka-create ng global deflection, which is the Coriolis effect. Okay? Number 53, rotation of the planet. The primary cause of Coriolis effect. Number 54. The general term for large bodies of intrusive rock is what? Okay? Large bodies of intrusive rock. What do we mean by intrusive rock? These are igneous rocks. Okay? Slate is a, is a metamorphic rock. So, it is not. Schist also is a metamorphic. Nice is a metamorphic. So, the answer should be letter C. They are what we call plutons. Okay? And we have different types of plutons. It's either batholith, seal, dike, and lacolith. Okay? Si seal is, syempre, pagkikita natin sa image, horizontal siya. 
horizontal intrusion. Dike, ito, vertical intrusion. Batholith is a simple para siyang uh, on a, in a certain location na dun yung magma, kung bali. Okay? It has a one large igneous intrusive rock. While as sila, kulit naman, saan siya ang pepwesto? Doon sa sedimentary rock structure. In between that sedimentary structure. Okay? So, batulit, nasa igneous, uh, igneous intrusive siya. Sila, kulit, intrusion siya sa different, uh, two different types of sedimentary layers. Okay? Number 55. Hubble's law. When we talk about Hubble's law, always think of it na yung certain object or certain heavenly body is lumalayo siya sa atin. Okay? Lumalayo siya sa atin. So, anong sagot dito? The answer should be letter D because of recessional velocity. Meaning, lumalayo siya on what you observe on the night sky. Okay? Lumalayo. Recessional. Hubble's law, recessional and associated si redshift. Always yan. Hubble's law, recessional velocity, redshift, longer wavelengths. Okay? Higher frequencies. Sige. 56. The change in position of a nearby star compared with the position of a far away star due to the change in an observer's position is called what? So, let's try to have a, a simple uh, demonstration of what is this. If we put your hand here and you look at it, try mo yung, iko-close mo yung right eye mo. Then, open, then close mo yung left eye mo. Diba? Nag-change yung positioning ng hand mo. And that is what we call parallax. Okay? That is what we call parallax. Nag-iiba yung viewpoint mo because of your, uh, the observer's viewpoint. Okay? Magkaiba yun. Sige. Number 57. The study of inland waters. Okay. Always ito, bumabalik. So, inland waters, uh, para nasa Janet din ito, inland waters always associate to limnology. Okay? Inland waters, limnology. And when we say, uh, number 58, um, about soil formation, that is, Letter C, soil science. Okay? When we talk about soil formation processes, that is what we call soil science. And when we talk about number 59, the gaseous parts of the earth, that is atmospheric science. Okay? Atmospheric science. So, yun yung mga associations niya. Let's go to number 60. Sino ito? Discovery of planet Uranus. That is automatic. Pag si Uranus, 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 that is Herschel. Uranus, Herschel. William Herschel. Okay? Again, Uranus, William Herschel. Lalabas yan. Okay? Memorize that one. Number 61. Cloud root. Heap. Heap meaning a heap of clouds. Heap of clouds. Ano yan? Heap of clouds. Nagpatong-patong. Cotton, cotton like, okay, malaking mga cotton, that is cumulus. That is cumulus. Heap, cumulus. Stratus, sheet. Sheet of clouds. Stratus, sheet. Nimbus, rain. Nimbus, rain. Cirrus, curl. Okay, curl or feathery. Feathery, yung mga feather like. Okay, so number 62. Which of the following is not one of Kepler's law? Pag di mo alam to, sayang yung points mo. Dahil, I think, from the last time, uh, from uh, 2021 let, apat ang, uh, apat ang lumabas na questions galing kay Kepler. So, you should memorize this three. Okay? So, sino dito ang hindi Kepler's law? The answer is letter D. Law of radial velocity. So we have the three Kepler laws. First law, ellipse. Okay? Law of elliptical path. Okay? Okay? The travel, ang travel yun sa mga planet is an, ellip, in an ellipse position. Second law, 
law of equal areas. Third law, we have the harmonic law. Okay? Memorize that one. Number 63. Which of the following air masses would be expected to be cold and dry? Diba kanina, we have mentioned uh, yung maritime tropical. Maritime meaning moist. Tropical meaning warm. So, what if cold and dry? Okay? Ito, ito yung acronym nila. ME, which means maritime equatorial. MA, maritime. Ano kayong A? Uh, A ba yun? Parang destructor lang ata ito. CP meaning continental polar. And CT meaning continental tropical. So, saan dito yung makikita natin cold and dry weather? So, continental meaning dry, polar meaning cold. So, the answer is letter C, continental polar. Okay? Continental polar. So, these are the meaning of this acronym. Maritime M, moist. Continental C, dry. Polar P, cold. Tropical T, warm. And equatorial is letter E. Number 64. Which of the following is used to measure altitude? Again, altitude. Clock ba? Hindi. Clock measures time. Compass ba? Hindi. Compass measures directions. Barometer ba? Hindi. Dahil barometer measures uh, pressure. Tama ba? Pressure ba? O pressure. So the answer is letter D, sextant. Okay? Letter D, sextant, altitude. Lalabas ito. So number 65. What other term is synonymous with texture in Arak? Again, texture. Ano yung kanina sa igneous? When we say about texture, we are talking about its grain size. Okay? Grain size. Pag malaki yung grain size or coarse grain, ano, ano ba? Intrusive or extrusive? That is intrusive. Pag fine grain, meaning it is extrusive. Okay? Remember that. Number 66. In the southern hemisphere, which direction does the wind rotate around a low? Okay? Sa southern hemisphere daw, ano ang rotation direction if you can find if there is a low pressure area? Okay? Medyo nakakalito siya dahil iba kasi yung nangyayari sa northern hemisphere at sa southern hemisphere. So ito yung basis mo. I-base mo yung location ng Philippines. Ano ang mangyayari? Ano makikita mo pag may low pressure, pag, mag, pag may bagyo or pag may LPA tayo? Since naan dito tayo sa Northern Hemisphere. ba? LPA always counterclockwise sa Northern. So meaning if counterclockwise siya sa atin, sa Southern section of our Earth, if LPA siya, that is on a clockwise direction. Okay, again, Base it on the Philippine setting, LPA always counterclockwise, meaning sa ibaba clockwise siya. Okay? Sa Philippines pag uh, sa northern hemisphere, if either may high pressure area, kabaliktaran ng LPA. So, sa northern, if northern siya, no mangyayari pag high pressure area, that is clockwise direction. Pag sa baba, that is counterclockwise. Okay? So, laruin mo lang yan. Just base it on a bagyo sa, Pil sa Pilipinas. Okay? Number 68. What is a cold front advancing under a warm front cold? Okay. Cold front, nag advance siya under a warm front. Okay? Cold front, warm front. nag advance siya. Okay? Nag-overtake siya. Okay? So, cold front, Warm front. Ano si cold front? Cold front is simply saying si cold air ay nag-overtake siya kay warm air. Mangyayari si cold front. Pag si warm air nag-overtake kang cold air, mangyayari si warm front. Pag, what if? Kung si cold front na yung advance sa warm front. That is what we call cold front occlusion. Okay? Cold front occlusion. Okay? Again, if si cool air ang mag-overtake ni warm air, that is what we call cold front. Cool air to warm air, cold front. 
warm air to cool air, warm front. Si cold front to warm front, occlusion. Okay? Yan, yan. So, number 70. What event is believed to create elements heavier than iron? What event is believed to create elements heavier than iron? So, ano ang dapat mangyari para makakreate tayo ng elements na mas mabigat kay iron? From the choices, automatically, instinct, it will always be a no, supernova explosion. Okay? Supernova explosion. Diba? After a supernova, ano mangyayari? Madam, it, it's birth of stars. So meaning, may creation of elements heavier than iron. Okay? Number 71. Which of the following scientists is generally designated as father of geology? Okay? Father of geology. A father of geology, that is James Hutton. Okay? James Hutton, who coined the word uniformitarianism. Okay? Uniformitarianism, meaning to say, is may nakita siyang evidence na si Earth ay nag-evolve in a uniform and a gradual process during an immense span of time. So, uniform yung evolution niya. Si James Hutton yan. Okay? Number 71. 72. Trivia. Trivia question. Maraming lalabas na trivia question talaga. So, better yet, read, read and read. Especially ano especially doon sa mga space probes especially sa Philippines yung Maya, Diwata at yung mga present issues ngayon yan talaga so for example number 72 Mercury mission project during a duration of 15 minutes and 37 seconds Randolph Atlantic Key term here is Randolph Atlantic. Pag may makita kayo, Randolph Atlantic, always that is associated to Redstone 4 or Liberty Bell 7. Again, Randolph Atlantic, Liberty Bell 7, Redstone 4. Or, try natin, 47. 47 Randolph Atlantic. Okay? Number 73. Amorain. Amorheng is what? So, if hindi mo alam to, skip. Skip agad. Okay? Pero, si Murain is what type of deposit? A deposit that, that's coming from a glacier. Okay? Ito yung Murain niya. The movement of the ice here, yung sediments niya is magmove siya sa uh, uh, the sides of that area. Okay? That is what they call moraine. That is a glacier deposit. Number 74. The precision of the Earth's axis is caused by what? Ang precision ng axis ng ating planet is due to pag hindi mo binasa yung choices at nagmamadali ka, yung, uh, yung sasagot mo dito is at first is tilt kasi may axis A. Pero hindi ito yung sagot. The answer should be letter D. Gravitational torque. Because yung precision niya, yung key term dito. Okay? Hindi tilt axis, that is gravitational torque. Number 75. 25 na lang. The vernal equinox indicates the beginning of what? Again, vernal equinox. Vernal is letter C. Spring. Vernal. Spring. Bago. Bago vernal. Okay? Spring. So we have the types of seasons. We have the winter solstice, summer solstice, spring, summer, autumn, winter. Okay? Vernal equinox is here. Autumn equinox is here. Okay? Winter meaning what? Ano mayayari sa day and night? Mas mataas yung night time. Okay? Summer mas taas yung day. Time. Winter longer nights, summer longer days. Fall Ano mangyari sa fall? Equal siya. So, equal, autumnal. Spring also is equal. That is vernal. Okay? 75. Vernal equinox, spring. Number 76. Mars can be seen as the brightest star and near its maximum apparent size when it is at. So, anong position ni Mars 
relative to you, to, to relative to us, na makikita natin yung brightest point niya. Okay? Opposition, conjunction, greatest elongation, retrograde motion. So, ano ang mangyayari dito ni Mars? So, the answer should be letter A. Dapat opposition siya. Opposition is this one. The conjunction is conjunction niya. Okay? A conjunction, if we say conjunction, meaning to say, the earth is in the center. Okay? The earth is in the I know. Conjunction, the sun is the center. Okay? The sun is the center. Si earth is nasa other side. Si Mars is nasa other side. So meaning, hindi yun maximum. Hindi natin yung makikita yung brightest part ni Mars. Unless on its opposition side. Makikita natin directly. Okay? The answer is opposition. Brightest opposition. Number 77. Who is this astronomer who spot uh, the comet Halley during its anticipated return in 1750? Okay? Ito. Huwag nyo sagutin agad si Edmond Halley. Pag may nakikita kayong kamit halay, basahin nyo ng buo. Dahil yung French astronomer na ito is si Charles Messier. Okay? Si Charles ito. Siya yung nakakita ni kamit halay na bumalik. Okay? But Edmond Halley is the one who coined that certain kamit. Okay, again, Ang nakakita ni Kamit Halley ng pabalik niya is si Charles Messier. Number 78. Which of the following statements concerning the terrestrial planet is false? So terrestrial planets, the ones that are near the sun. Okay? Let's try letter D. Lahat ba may magnetic field except ni Venus? Lahat ba na may magnetic Lahat ba ng terrestrial planets ay at wala si Venus. Yes, that is true. Okay? Mercury and Venus can never be in a position. Yes, that is also true. And letter B, they are relatively close to the sun. Yes, of course, they, they are terrestrial planets. So the answer here is letter A. All rotate clockwise as viewed from above the North Pole. The one that is different here is Venus because it is rotating in a counterclockwise direction. Okay? Si Venus lang yung counterclockwise. Number 78. What is the possible effect of the construction of dams? So pag may nagko-construct tayo ng dam, meron talagang changes sa ecosystem. Okay? One, contributes to global warming. Kukontribute ba siya? Pag uh, uh, nililimit natin yung water flow, yes, it can contribute to global warming actually. Number two, displaces communities. Of course, kasi chine-change natin yung landscape ng area. Especially yung water flow niya. Okay? Number three, increases the occurrences of waterborne diseases. Yes, because yung part sa dam, medyo stagnant siya, hindi pa siya flowing, magka-create talaga. Kasi chine-change na natin yung uh, normal na flow ng river. Meaning to say, it could have meron yung malaria, uh, other vector-borne diseases. So the answer here is letter D, all of the above. Number 80. Why does the earth have seasons? Again, seasons, we always associate that with D. What? Seasons, seasons, the earth is orbiting around the sun nang dahil sa axis niya. Okay? Ang tilted axis niya. Okay? Seasons, the Earth's axis. Number 81. Which of the following is not essential to the Bergeron process? Okay? Bergeron process simply saying this is how nature creates snow. Okay? Snow making process. So, sino dito ang wala sa process nito? Sino? Si silver iodide. Anong kinalaman ni silver iodide dyan? Siyempre, may mixing May super cold vapor para umayos siya. At syempre, ice crystals. Yung product. Number 82. 
the greatest number of hurricane casualties is caused by which of the following? Hurricane casualties. Pag merong hurricane or pag merong bagyo, may chances of tidal surge or storm surge. Ano mangyayari? Lahat ay mawawala within the coastline. Babaha dyan. Tataas yung tubig. Okay? Dyan ang maraming casualties. Hindi flying debris kasi mostly makakailag di tayo or makakatago. But storm surge, storm surge is, ano mangyayari? You have no other way to go but to, to go to areas that are elevated. Either umakyat ka sa bubong or not. Pero what if mas mataas pa sa bubong yung tubig? Di ba? Okay? That's why madami casualties if meron may storm surge. Number 83. By what name is an upward pointing arc of a fold? Okay? Upward pointing arc of a, of a fold. Okay? My folding. My movement sa land structure. So, the answer should be either anticline or syncline. So, differentiate anticline or syncline. Let's start from syncline. Meaning, sink. Sink. Okay? Sink. Sink is always downward. The anticline is the upward pointing. Okay? Anticline. Syncline. Nag-sink. Anticline. And sink line. 84. Which two primary factors does the rate of weathering of rock depend on? Okay. Rate of weathering. Ano ang primary factors para mag-weather yung rock? Siyempre. May init. Okay, di ba? Init. Pag may init, ano kabaliktaran yan? May tubig. So, the answer should be temperature and humidity. So, these are the underlying factors. Cold and humid. If we go to, uh, if the answer the question talks about cold and humid, we are talking about physical weathering process. If it is hot and humid, we are talking about chemical weathering process. Okay? Physical weathering, saan usually nangyayari? Sa high altitudes. Hot and humid, nasa equator. Dahil sa Sun's rays. Direct kasi siya. Na tinatamaan. So, number 85. Okay. Uh, the age of the universe. <laughs> age of the universe. Always remember that it is 13.7. 13.7 billion years. Number 86. Crab nebula is what remains of from the word remains. Remain, ha? Huh? Meaning, ang aftermath. Ang aftermath ng what? Aftermath ng supernova. This is the Crab Nebula. 87. Continental glaciers are found in. Again, continental. Malaki yung area. So, saan natin makikita ito? Makikita ito, syempre, kay Greenland at Antarctic. And lalabas din ito sa Gen Ed. 88. Steep volcanic peaks that rise more than one kilometer above the ocean floor. Okay? Sometimes higher than the sea level surface of the ocean. Steep volcanic peaks. Steep volcanic peaks are sea mounts. Sea mountains. Okay? Ito yung itsura niya. Sea mounts. Volcanic island. May vulcan. Island. Uh, island, island volcano. <laughs> Marine erosion. And Gio. Gio is like a uh, plateau na submerged underwater. Number 89. Another trivia. Apollo mission failed after the astronauts died a few weeks before they were supposed to land. What mission is this? This is the Apollo 1. Again, pag nai, may namatay na astronaut, a few weeks before they were supposed to land, that is Apollo 1. Okay? Number 90, last 10. A Douglas fear grows in what location? Fear. Uh, from the Christmas song, di ba? Fear tree. Okay? Saan natin makikita ang mga fear tree? Ito, yung fear tree. 
Usually makikita ni uh, makikita natin ito sa isang moist environment like Baguio. Okay? Moist environment 91. Whether the universe will continue to expand or will collapse back into another big bang seems to depend on what property of the universe. The expansion of the universe always we relate it to its density. Sa density yan. Okay? Expansion of the universe, density. Number 92. A reference system that can be used to locate objects in the sky. Reference system, yun, ito yung binibase natin para makalocate natin yung mga objects sa taas. This is what we call the celestial sphere, which is this one. Number 93. Two most abundant elements in the Earth's crust. Two most abundant elements in the Earth's crust. Again, Earth's crust. That is silicon and oxygen. SiO2. Okay? Silicon and oxygen. 94. Kyoto Protocol. Kyoto Protocol, that is environmental protection. Okay? The purpose of the Kyoto Protocol is environmental protection. 95. Reverse faulting probably resulted from which type of stress? Okay. We have uh, two types of uh, faults. We have the normal fault and we have the what we call reverse fault. Normal fault is uh, yung normal. Yung reverse is baliktad sa normal. Ba? Uh, literally speaking. So, reverse faulting, anong mangyari? Pinup uh, pinupul ba niya? Or bumabangga ba siya? Or eto. Ito yung compressional. Is this reverse or is this normal? Pag-compressional. This is what we call a what? Normal fault. Okay? Tumataas. So, si reverse fault, ito, bumababa yung, ano, that is pulling part. Ay, baliktad. Si reverse faulting is yung compressional stress. Okay? The answer here is compressional. Baliktad siya. So, compressional stress, si normal fault is growing pataas siya. Tama ba? Compressional stress, shortening and thickening. Reverse. Ah, tama nga. Normal fault. Uh, okay. Ko, uh, reverse fault is another way of saying thrust fault. Si thrust fault is lower angle siya. So, si reverse fault, meaning, ana, meaning to say is, there is a compressional stress, kaya tataas yung foot wall niya. Si normal fault is uh, pulling apart stress or tensional stress. That's why bumababa yung foot wall niya. Okay? Reverse fault, compressional stress. Normal fault, pulling apart stress. That is number 95. Number 96. Rocks are classified as igneous, sedimentary, or metamorphic based on their kanina method of formation. Okay, method of formation. 97. Which statement correctly compares seismic P waves and with seismic S waves? Ito, medyo uh, tricky ito. So, primary waves versus the secondary waves. Si primary waves, always associate natin yan, yung waves na always protruding. Meaning to say, uh, in any element, makakapasok siya. Either liquid or either solid. That is P wave. And P waves are much faster than secondary waves. So the answer here should be letter A. P waves travel faster and P waves passes through the Earth's liquid zone. Okay? These are the types of waves. Si P waves at si secondary or shear wave are what we call body waves. Surface waves, we have love wave and Rayleigh wave. Si primary wave, ano mo yari? Fastest wave siya. Secondary wave, 
yan yung nagta-travel only on a solid solid uh, uh, solid land structure okay but si primary wave solid or liquid surface wave yung motion niya is different okay pero si love wave is mas faster siya at side to side yung movement niya si rayleigh wave is uh, it rolls along the ground okay so body waves and p waves number 98 the primitive atmosphere of earth was deficient in free oxygen anong process ang may responsible sa development ng free oxygen again the key term is primitive wala pang plants wala pang plants so ano ang nangyayari sa earth meron volcanic eruptions letter c number 99 During which period in the Earth's history did most dinosaurs become extinct? Extinct. What era uh, do these dinosaurs became extinct? That is the Cretaceous period. Okay, Cretaceous period. Remember, ha, extinction, Cretaceous period. Era of dinosaurs, Mesozoic era. Okay, last number. The time interval between two successive occurrences of a specific type of alignment with the sun and the earth is referred to as what? Okay? Two successive occurrences. Again, the term here is time interval. Time interval. Meaning, yung time interval niya between the position. So, hindi, we are not talking about positions here. So, cancel conjunction, cancel opposition. So, we are left with Sidereal and synodic. So what is the difference between the two? Sidereal is with respect to the fixed stars. Synodic with respect to the sun and earth. So from the question, we are talking about what? Alignment of a planet with the sun and the earth. So the answer here is synodic period. Okay? So... Uh, small tip lang, pag earth science kasi, sa physical science majorship, always halos lahat is ano, objective. So dapat, nire-review mo yung mga basic terms and basic concept of earth science. Si earth science kasi, lahat, madami kasi yung topics. Si chemistry at si physics, more on solving siya. Okay? More on solving or more on, hinahanap natin yung ano sa question. Kung ano ang mang lalabas sa question. Si Earth Science is uh, more on trivia and uh, objective. Okay? So that's uh, that ends the Earth Science uh, video lecture.